then we need to talk about scale. And scale is how um, the proportion, the proportion of the object in relation to the space that it's in. So you want to make sure when you have a space that you fill it up with um, just the right object. Um, in this picture, I want to call your attention to that back wall because don't you feel like that little cabinet is too small for that back wall? What do y'all think? I mean, it's a beautifully decorated room. Other than that, little piece, and they have these. Um, the artwork on the walls are just kind of hanging out with nothing to anchor them to the bottom. So what I would do probably in this room is just have a longer console um, that extends the length of the wall. And that would um, be much more to scale. Okay. We love our vaulted ceilings, don't we? Everybody, <laughs> that is a challenge. It is a challenge. And so um, actually this wall right here with the windows is done very well. They have the big piece in the center of the wall. The window treatments are to scale. But um, they have this other big wall over here on the side. Um, but you know, there's no furniture that's tall enough to fill up that space. That is a huge, huge entertainment center. And even that, I guess that wall is like a dwarf, right? So um, it makes you want to maybe put something else on that wall on top of it to kind of fill up that space. <laughs> sell the house. <laughs> sell the house. Or what we actually, you know, would do is if you don't want to deal with all that stuff at the top, you would bring the ceiling down, right, and create an imaginary line um, on, in between the windows and just, you know, kind of pretend that that's where your ceiling is. And that way you don't have to worry about all that top space. Okay. And then the other thing that you need to think about when you're planning your space is the actual function that you do in there. So, I mean, our rooms are all multifunction. You don't do just one thing in every room, right? Um, and, and how many people live in your house, you know? So everybody does something different in every room. Um, this is a family room, obviously. And so we can already tell just by looking at the picture that they do many, many things in here. They love to sit by the fire, probably, you know. Um, talk to each other, hang out, watch TV, obviously, read. There's a lot of books in here. It's kind of like their library study, those kinds of things. On that previous room, uh -huh. both couches the same size, or is one of the same ones another size? They're both the same. Both the same. Mm -hmm. And because if your room can fit that, that's great. The more seating, the better, right? And then on the end, on the ends of the sofa, so you have two chairs facing the TV, in case, you know, you want to be facing directly to the TV. Some people like to lie down on the sofa and watch TV that way. You know, it just all depends on how you how you all want to relax in that room. And then in the very back corner here, you see that they have put in some sort of a desk. Um, it's not a, an office. Um, it seems like maybe they just use it for correspondence, maybe for some bill paying, although that's the neatest. <laughs> They'll pay yeah, yes, really. I've ever seen. <laughs> you want my bill pay. I know. <laughs> they probably, yeah, Ellen's been to their house. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, so that's, they, they, they designated the space for that. So if, you know, if you do certain things in a room, you, you need to designate areas for stuff like that. It's another example. Oh, this is an example of a room that's not quite planned very well. And I, I want to ask y'all if y'all notice what is wrong with this picture. Very good. Um, can you just imagine walking through to that other side of the bed and just knocking your shin on the edge of that? That is not very good space planning. And the truth of it is that really doesn't belong there. They just kind of smooshed it in there for the picture. And so um, when the people are actually not being photographed, and are living in this room, that chaise is further down on this wall. They have enough room to be around the same Okay, this is another multifunction room. Um, so they have the seating area here by the fireplace. There's a fireplace here on this um, right in. And uh, so it's just, you know, for conversation, for visiting, entertaining, possibly, you know, book clubs, stuff like that. Um, and then at the very back corner, again, you see a little desk for writing correspondence. You 
could put a laptop there, I guess, if you wanted to. But it's a separate area so that they're not necessarily part of this group over here. You could have several things going on in this room and not have anyone intruding on each other's space, right? Which is what we want for your game. Yes. Well, the, over here right here? Yeah, I'll show you that in a second. And then just notice that, you know, this is something you need to consider when you're planning your spaces is the traffic area. So if you want, you know, you want to be able to walk freely around um, the separate areas and not run into the other members of your family. So this is the back side of this. As you can see, the kitchen opens up into this great room. And uh, that's the breakfast area right there. And um, it's not a separate area like, you know, most homes we have a designated breakfast area. This is just all part of that big giant room. And so they just um, included that dining set in there um, and then used a rug to make sure that this area right here is separate. A rug is great because it's <coughs> like creating your own little room in a room. Okay, so that's furniture. And um, let's go ahead and talk about accessories because now that you know, kind of, I don't know if you've been thinking in your minds where you want to put your um, furniture pieces and then, um, you know, to finish your room, then you want to add the little pretty stuff, right? The accessories. And this is the fun stuff that we love to do. But, but this is kind of the dilemma because a lot, of, um, a lot of folks ask me, you know, I have all this stuff, I've moved in to my new house and I have all this stuff in my old house and then where do I, where do I put it? What, what do I do? And it's kind of backwards because really what you need to do is to put all your big pieces down, your furniture and all that, and then look around and, and see where the empty spots are. And then, and then think about, oh, I need something here, I need something here, I need something here. Um, and then you go out and get it. Because accessories are, are so easy. You know, it's, it's readily available. It's, you know, are you addicted to home goods? Yeah, <laughs> Hobby Lobby, right? And so we go and, and, you know, we find something pretty, not that expensive, and most of it is an impulse buy. Because, you know, you just find something like, oh, I gotta have that. And then I'll just I'll find a place for it in my house. I'm sure my big four thousand square foot house. <laughs> and then and then it just sits in the corner because you don't know you don't have a plan in your mind where you want to put it. And so um, you shouldn't do that anymore. <laughs> okay. So again, when we talk about accessories, same thing applies: furniture and accessories. You want to balance it out. So this is a good example balancing with an accessory. You have a weird, you know, just a one window on this side of the bed, and so you want to balance it on this other side with an art piece. And as you can see, it's, you know, not too big, not too small. It just fills up that space just right. Same thing here. You have a lamp here on the one side. Balance it with a tree on the other side. We have a table here, and another accent table there. And then balancing your tabletops. But sometimes this is also hard. You think, you know, you could just put stuff on a table and it'll look great. Um, but you kind of have to put a little thought into it and make sure that everything looks as far as the visual weight, again, the visual weight of the piece, and it's balanced. 